Hi everyone, welcome to Late Night Research Methods. I am Miss M and I'm going to take you through a couple of research methods that you need to know for this ACE Psychology Syllabus. Today we are going to talk about correlations. Okay, so correlations do not imply causation. That is the one saying that needs to stick in your head through this entire year. Correlations do not imply causations. What do I mean? A correlation is a mutual relationship between two variables. Cause and effect is saying that variable A caused variable B to occur. Now we are only talking about correlations and we actually have maybe three of our studies in this syllabus that we are dealing with correlations. So it's not many. I'm going to let you know those um, so you can hold on to those. Okay, so why would we use a correlation versus a cause and effect? Well, we basically are going to use a correlational study when it's not possible for us to control the variables. Okay, whether it's a brand new theory um, or maybe it's a field experiment and we don't have control in like a lab would. Um, and sometimes it's unethical to control these variables. So we conduct what is called a correlational study. So um, here is an example of why you might use a correlation instead of cause and effect. So say we want to study um, a relationship and see if playing violent video games causes real life violence. Now it would really be unethical for you to manipulate a child to watch prolonged violent television and on the other hand it would also be unethical for um, you to cause some type of violent act um, in a real life setting for a child. So in, instead of trying to control those two variables what we do is we look um, at numbers to find a correlation or a relationship. Okay so um, again the difference between cause and effect that's an experiment we are controlling the variables um, but in a correlational study we are simply measuring the variables and we are looking for trends in data okay now the relationship between these two variables is described by a direction in which the data is moving now you're you may be required on the exam to draw a positive or a negative correlation. Don't worry, I have a good example for you, so um, you'll be able to do that by the end of this video. Okay, so um, by the direction in which the variables are moving. So we have positive or a negative correlation. Let's talk about positive correlations first. So this is an increase in one variable accompanies the increase in another variable. You notice that I didn't say an increase in one variable causes another because there is no causation in correlation. So it, it just accompanies it and it goes at the same rate as the other variable. So it's safe to say that they're moving in at the same rate. Um, all correlations are moving at the same rate. So basically that just means that if variable A is going to move up one, um, then variable B is going to move up one as well. Okay. So here's some real ex real life examples of um positive correlations okay so um the here's here's our two variables so the more you attend school the higher your grades get now we are not talking um about causation so we're not saying that high grades cause you to go to school a lot or that going to school a lot causes you to have high grades, we don't know if there's another variable in there, like individual differences or motivation. So we can just say that there's a correlation. So the less school you attend, the lower your grades are. Now, um, positive correlation just means that the variables are moving in the same direction. It doesn't necessarily mean that the variables itself is a positive or a negative thing. Okay, so positive correlations move in the same direction. Now we have um, two positive correlations in our uh, within our 12 studies. Um, the first one is the Canley study. So the more emotionally intense an image is, 
the more likely we are to remember it. Now, remember Canley, we studied the amygdala um, and emotional intensity. So in the conclusion of Canley, it states there is a positive correlation between emotionally intense images and the occurrence of remembering. So that just means that um, we don't know if, you know, highly memorable images cause more emotionally in, in more emotional intensity um, or vice versa. Remember, it's a correlation. So there's just a relationship between highly emotional images and the likelihood of us remembering them. Okay, positive correlation. They are moving at the same rate. Um, another study that we have is Dement and Kleitman. And that second aim about duration of time, remember the variables were five and 15. So we asked participants how long they thought they had been dreaming and then we actually had objective data from um, our EEG machine that told us how long participants were dreaming. And we actually found a positive correlation so between the sub the subjective estimated time of dreaming and the actual length of REM before awakening. Um, so what that actually means is what someone guessed that they dreamt for that length of time, say it was five minutes, they actually dreamt for five minutes. So again, we're not saying that one causes the other to occur, but we're saying that there's some type of relationship and it's possible that there is another variable in there. Okay. Um, so we technically don't have the ability to control REM. So um, this had to be a correlational study. We were just measuring the variables. Okay, so um, if you're ever asked to draw a positive correlation, this is a positive correlation. Okay, so you see that we have zero and one to eight, one to, to eight or 10. So as one variable increases, the other variable is increasing at the same rate. Okay, so this is going up this way and it's going up that way at the same time. Okay, so um, as one moves up one, the other follows. Okay, um, so we can get a lot of positive correlations from things like questionnaires. I recently remember one that was done on um, high school kids and smoking and there was a positive correlation between kids that smoked and their parents that smoked. Now, remember, it's not causation, so basically it doesn't mean that because kids smoke, their parents smoke, or because parents smoke, their kids smoke. It just means that there is a relationship between these two variables, and it's possible that there's a variable that we haven't studied that is actually um, maybe causing one or the other to occur. Okay. Negative correlation, okay? Negative correlation means the higher score of one variable corresponds to the lower score of another variable. So instead of a positive correlation moving in the same direction, whether it's up or down, we have opposites, okay? A negative correlation is the opposite. So as one variable increases, the other variable decreases at the same exact rate. Okay, so um, the big study in these 12 studies that we have a negative correlation is Baron Cohen's study. And we found a negative correlation between the AQ test, the autism quotient, and the eyes test, the theory of mind. Okay, so basically what that means is the AQ, you could score from zero to 50. Um, and if you scored high, like a 50 on that AQ, it, the, it corresponded with a, a really low score on the theory of mind. Okay, and vice versa. If you were able to score really high on that theory of mind, then your score on the AQ was really, really low. All right, and we just measured those variables um, through a questionnaire. We weren't actually able to manipulate or control them. So Baron Cohen's study is a correlational study. It's not exactly, um, you know, a cause and effect. So a negative correlation looks like this. Okay, so we have one through eight, one through 10 here. Um, but this time as one variable is decreasing, so this variable is decreasing, this one is still increasing. Okay, and the, this one increases at the same rate as this one decreases. Did you even get that? Okay, um, let's look at them side by side. Okay, we have a negative correlation and positive correlation. Don't forget that. All right, um, let's look at some more 
quick real life examples of a positive and a negative correlation. Um, so I had said the one where you attend school, your grades get higher. So, um, or you don't go to school, you go to school less and your grades get lower. Um, a negative correlation might be um, the weather and clothing, right? So um, the hotter it gets outside, the less clothing we wear. Um, or vice versa, of the colder it gets, the more clothing we put on. Okay, so um, that was it really quickly. That's correlations do not imply causations. We have positive correlations. Those move in the same direction um, at the same rate. And then we have negative correlations and those move in the opposite directions um, at the same exact rate. I like to think of negative correlations like the negative sides of magnets. You try to push them together and they, they push apart really quickly. Okay, and then positive, they wanna join, they wanna get together. So. Um, here we have positive correlations are swooping in at the same time. They're going in the same direction. Um, and then the negative correlations are going in the complete opposite direction. All right. Good luck guys. Thanks. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining me at late night research methods. I'll be doing a lot more videos, uh, research methods late at night, just because I'm running out of time during the day. Um, stay at home mom with four kids. So if you are having trouble in research methods, please reach out to me. Uh, you can comment below any questions that you have. I am going to hit all of these vocab words that you that you need to know and um, I'll give you little hints along the way. So if you need some help, send me an email apsychology9990 at gmail.com. Um, if you really need some help and want to get into my Google Classroom, subscribe to my channel and then send me an email with the subject line Google Classroom and I'll send you a quick invite. All right. Thanks again. See you next time.